but the idea that wealthy people exist and I'm entitled to that, and the only reason that I don't have the things that I need to live with dignity are because somebody else out there is keeping it from me, and if I just had all their stuff, then I could live with dignity, that's about as anti-Christian as anything that I've ever heard. For one, because it puts the focus on you and the world, which is the exact opposite of the Christian mindset, which is to think about others and look at things with spiritual eyes, look at things the way that God sees them, not through the material lens, but through the spiritual one. That our lives are measured not by the amount of stuff that we have, but by the good that we do to other people and the way that we obey God and His commands. Hey there, fellow tacticians. Don't forget to like and subscribe and ring that little notification bell because the more likes and subscriptions I get, the more people see my conservative content, which will make America a better place and angers the dark cyber overlords at YouTube. Even though I have pretty massive departures from the doctrine of the Catholic Church, there are certain things that you could always sort of count on them being an ally on, and, and to their credit, Pope Francis has continued to be pretty strong on things like abortion, for example. And so I do appreciate that, that he hasn't, you know, just completely abandoned all reason for madness on that front. But when it comes to some other issues, specifically ones when it comes to personal freedom and God-given rights, it seems like he's gone way off the rails on this one. The commie Pope has struck again, so, and I know that I know that there's going to be some Catholics that are upset with me for bringing this up, but it's it's in the news, and it's important. And frankly, if I were a Catholic, I'd be far more upset at the Pope than I would be at me for pointing out the stuff that the Pope said. So, this is from that same Reuters article. The encyclical, which Francis signed in Assei on Sunday, covers topics such as fraternity, immigration, the rich-poor gap, economic and social justices, healthcare imbalances, and the widening political polarization in many countries. The Pope took direct aim at trickle-down economics, the theory favored by conservatives that tax breaks and other incentives for big business and the wealthy eventually will benefit the rest of society through investment and job creation. Okay, uh, first of all, trickle-down economics is not a thing. It's not a thing in free markets. Now, it is a thing in cronyism. So if you're talking about policies or laws that are put into place that, for example, bail out banks or give several million dollars to a failed solar pa uh, panel company or bails out our big automakers, all of which was done by Democrats, uh, then yes, that is trickle-down economics. That is cronyism. The idea that you're going to give a bunch of money to super rich people and hope that it's somewhere down the line that that money winds up in the hands of poor people. That idea is stupid, and it is not free market. There is nothing less free market than taking a bunch of money from taxpayers and giving it to one of your buddies that happens to run a big business. That's not a free market. Trickle-down economics is not a conservative policy. I don't know of a single conservative that thinks that the government ought to have power to tax some people and give it to very rich people in the hopes that that money winds up somewhere else. In fact, the Tea Party, you remember that organization taxed enough already? It was founded in response to the bank bailouts. It was founded in response to the most conservative grassroots movement in generations was founded around the idea that that is a bad thing. And so Reuters just completely gets their facts wrong on this. They try to attribute that to conservatives. There's not a thing in the world conservative or free market about trickle-down economics. Now, when it comes to giving big tax breaks, well, we don't want big tax breaks for big companies only. We want tax breaks for everybody. I'm in favor of a 10% flat tax. That's my policy that I want to put into place. I think it should be 10% across the board. Would that be a big tax cut for big companies? Yes. Would it also be a really, really big tax break for middle-class families? Yeah, it would be a big tax break for them, too. I'm for less taxes across the board, not specifically targeted for rich people. It continues on. 
There were those who would have us believe that freedom of market was sufficient to keep everything secure after the pandemic hit, he wrote. So this is words directly from the Pope. No, that's not the free market's job. The free market does not promise security. The free market does not pretend to protect you from the outside world. In fact, markets are by their very existence volatile and they react to things. They are reactionary. That is what they do. The reason that they work is because they react to the environment. They wouldn't work otherwise. Because, for example, in the USSR, when some kind of stimulus enters the system, that stimulus is pretty much gone by the time that somebody actually reacts and does something about it. It's kind of like if you were to equate it to internet browsers, your free market is your Mozilla Firefox, created by the free market, or your Google Chrome, also created by the free market, versus your Internet Explorer, which technically was created by the free market. But the reason for its being slow is because it didn't have to compete the way that the other two did. Why? Because it was loaded into the system when you got your PC. And by the way, I'm not saying that that means the Internet Explorer is a product of government. I'm not suggesting that at all. I'm saying it's slower and provides worse service because it didn't have to compete the way that the others did. That competition, a free market principle, is what made those other browsers superior. And so, like government programs, when government runs the economy and has its control on everything, it runs like Internet Explorer, which is to say, incredibly slowly, and even after it loads, it's probably going to be buggy. That's what happens when government is in charge of things. And so it's true that the free market cannot keep you. It doesn't protect you, nor does it pretend to protect you from outside forces or the elements or a giant storm or a market crash. It's not supposed to protect you from those things. But what it does do is that it reacts to them in a way that is less impactful, not completely non-impactful, but less impactful than if the government is running everything. It is more efficient that way. Now, sometimes you do need the government to do things, and I totally understand that. But most of the time, the free market builds, uh, winds up yielding better results, faster results, and does it cheaper. And so that's what the free market does when something like this giant pandemic hits. I mean, are you going to feel the effects if you're in a free market country? Yeah. But it's important to note here that the entire world is now looking to America for treatments. And yes, there are other countries that are trying really hard to find some kind of vaccine or treatment for COVID. And that's good. And if they get there before us, more power to them. But why is it that the entire world look to us to figure out how to deal with this thing? Because we're the only country that has a free market system. We're the only one where there's an actual profit incentive to develop these things, and that's the reason that America develops over four times as much medical innovation as the second biggest innovator of medicine, Great Britain. Literally, the rest of the world has their free health care, free being in quotation marks, because they usually pay through the nose for it, but the rest of the world is able to enjoy their free health care on their government's dole specifically because they don't have to innovate because America's free market system does it for them. Canada isn't doing a lot of medical innovation. Why? Because they know that America is going to do it, and then they can just get whatever America comes up with and use that to treat people. And so the Pope is completely backwards here. That he's saying that the free market doesn't protect you from a pandemic. No, it doesn't. You're right on that. But if we didn't have the free market, if we didn't have at least one country in the world that had some semblance of a free market in their medical system, then we would really be screwed when it came to actually figuring out how to treat this thing. America leads the way on this because there is a profit motive to do so. And then he continues on a little bit further on. Francis repeated past calls for redistribution of wealth to help the poorest and for fair access to natural resources by all. 
the right to private property can only be considered a secondary natural right derived from the principle of universal destination of created goods, he said. The Vatican official said that the Pope was referring to those with massive wealth. The Pope wrote that the belief of the early Christians, quote, that if one person lacks what is necessary to live with dignity, it is because another person is detaining it, was still valid. This is the exact opposite of the gospel. This is a gospel of Satan. I know that's going to some, offend some people that I said that, but it is the truth. What you are talking about is putting your faith and hope in a gospel of materialism, being a friend to the world, and ignoring the gospel of Christ. This is one of the most ridiculous things I've ever heard of from somebody that purports to be a follower of Jesus Christ. When you're talking about redistribution of wealth, that if somebody else has something, it's because they took it from me, that they're detaining it from me. The reason that I can't live with dignity is because somebody else took my stuff. Not that they stole it directly from me, or they took it from me because I made it, just because somehow they're detaining things from me, therefore I can't live a life of dignity. Where is that in the gospel? Gospel preaches the exact opposite of that. That a person lives with dignity regardless of what they have. Think about the parable of the rich man and Lazarus. Who was living with dignity? Not the rich man. He's the one that winds up in torment. He had a lot of pleasure in his life, but he wasn't living with dignity. Lazarus was. And then when he's asked about that, he says, look, you had your reward. You lived, you know, the fun life on earth. But Lazarus lived with dignity. And this is a theme that is consistent throughout the entirety of Scripture. That dignity comes from serving God, not having stuff. That's ridiculous. And this breeds envy. Isn't that something that Catholics refer to as the seven deadly sins? Now, I don't necessarily subscribe to that, but I thought Catholics were supposed to. Envy is not the same as jealousy. Jealousy means you want stuff that other people have. Envy means you don't want other people to have it just out of spite whether you get it or not. This is what that is, that there are people that are living extravagantly and they shouldn't be allowed to do that. What business is it of yours? Now, if you're talking about on a spiritual level that there's people that are hoarding all their wealth and not sharing it, not giving things to other people, well, yeah, I would say that those people are not living the way Christ told them to, if that's the way that they're living. But the idea that Wealthy people exist, and I'm entitled to that, and the only reason that I don't have the things that I need to live with dignity are because somebody else out there is keeping it from me, and if I just had all their stuff, then I could live with dignity. That's about as anti-Christian as anything that I've ever heard. For one, because it puts the focus on you and the world, which is the exact opposite of the Christian mindset, which is to think about others and look at things with spiritual eyes, look at things the way that God sees them. Not through the material lens, but through the spiritual one. That our lives are measured not by the amount of stuff that we have, but by the good that we do to other people and the way that we obey God and His commands. That's what the Bible teaches, not this drivel. And another thing too, when he talks about private property being a secondary right, that's not in the Torah, and it's not in the New Testament, so I'm kind of at a loss as to where he's getting that. Because I remember reading the Torah, maybe he should pick you know, up a Pentateuch at, at some point, and actually read through the Old Testament, the Law of Moses. If you stole from somebody, it didn't matter if they were richer than you or not. You had to pay. You had to recompense them for that. If you even inadvertently, even by accident, caused some kind of terrible thing to happen to somebody's property, you still had to pay them. Because private property is something that the Bible has always asserted as being a natural right. That's the reason that our founders thought of life, liberty, and property as the three big primordial God-given rights. Because that's something that is throughout the entire Old and New Testament. One of the Ten Commandments, Thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's goods. 
That's two of them right there. And those are two things that are completely incompatible with socialism. The idea that I have to have somebody else's stuff, and if I, if I don't have it, it's because somebody else is keeping it from me. That's a victim mentality that is born out of looking at the world through a materialistic, fleshly lens. It's not something that comes from the teachings of Jesus. Studies show that YouTube videos featuring attractive women get far more likes and subscriptions than ones that don't. This is especially true if she's exotic looking. Luckily, in the modern era, there's an easy way to work around this. You see, I identify as a very attractive Hispanic woman, so now you have to like this video and subscribe to my channel, otherwise you're just an evil, heartless Nazi that hates brave, liberated, beautiful Latina women like me. Checkmate, woke brigade.